Okay, welcome. Just going to do some predictions for what I feel is some historic sporting events that are coming up this weekend. So um, I'll start with the boxing. For the, for how big this sort of setup is, and how I don't know how new it is, but it feels new to me in the in the modern era of doing five versus five. Frank Warren's roster, his best five versus the Hearn's best five, it is a cool concept. I'm sure it has existed before. My boxing knowledge is not that extensive to know if it has existed before. Like I said, my take on sports is I'm I'm really really drawn to sport more so because of the huge personalities and the narratives and what can be learned what lessons can be displayed in sport which if if you zoom out can apply to real life so that's sort of the way I watch sport maybe in a, a way too efficient way but uh, you know it is what it is other people won't watch it for the upset for the entertainment I, I get that i do as well i think um you know football in most in so many regards is very poetic and beautiful to watch other sports i can't comment on but i'm sure everything at a level of mastery is is elegant to watch anyways the 5v5 and the 5v5 is is five of uh, frank warren's fighters and f- five of uh, eddie hearn's fighters and and um, I think, well, I don't think I've ever had a quick read and it's like, which I think is pretty cool, is a certain number of points for a KO, which I'm, I'm really only going to be covering just now my prediction on Zhang, Zili Zhang and Deontay Wilder, because uh, you know, that, that that's my draw to this sporting event. And I know Dubois is a British guy. And Herkovich and the other guys are extremely well known. But to me, the, the, you know, this is my my draw. Anyways, one or one point for a decision, two points for a for a TKO, and we know Deontay Wilder can has in, in early on in his career just had is formidable with knockouts, and also the captain. They've made Deontay Wilder the captain, and I don't know who who the captain is on their side, but Deontay Wilder is a captain on Eddie Hearn's side, so it's it's double. Is double points for the captain, so I, I think you know as Deontay Wilder doesn't need any more motivation to try and go for a knockout, but it's even sweeter that it's he'd be the captain. There will be double the points. So Queensbury versus Matchroom here, uh, which are the two respective uh, boxing associations. Uh, okay, in terms of my thoughts on this and where I think it's going, I think uh, yeah. So I've re- I'm re- I'm reading off some notes I've made. So I think for the amount of promotion that Saudi have done for this setup, I think it hasn't got as much eyes on it, in my humble opinion, because the big draw in boxing is people like Canelo and you know Tyson Fury, and I think there's been more eyes on Tyson Fury and also the Fury Usyk. There's been yeah, there's been more eyes on the, those two fights than there have been on or, on these five altogether. I think so. I, I just feel a bit sad regarding that. That you know, I think I've seen some of the promotion. I think there's been like cinematic movie style promotions, and a lot of effort has gone into it. And I just feel as though it's been a little bit underappreciated. But uh, that's just from my standpoint. So I've only seen the one interview actually about with Wilder. I haven't extensively watched all the interviews with Wilder and in that interview it was actually a friend of mine that sent it to me in that interview when I watched it I just feel as though the Wilder and the trash talk and and with his level of confidence how he, how he used to speak back in the day pre Tyson Fury and those knockouts is different so I just think this is a different man we're dealing with and and not a highly highly improved man it may be in character but in fighting style, etc., I don't really see it. So, so I think he's weaker, and I and I think he, I, I think he may lose against Zhang. Okay, I think uh, Zhang has the capability to retire Wilder. Unfortunately, what else have I got on this? Yeah, so retirement pending for Wilder. I think is my. Is my prediction on it? I could be wrong. That's why we love uh, sport. You know, it's 
it's very much up in the air, especially in heavyweight boxing. I do want to give, I think Wilder deserves his flowers. I think he has an incredibly inspiring story, having started the boxing very late on and, you know, his, his why being such a huge why because his child, his daughter had a birth defect and it's just inspiring, the story. is you know, he's a child, he's a father of um, a large family, so he's supporting all his family, so very honourable individual. And I think he's one of those personalities in the game where you got the Muhammad Ali, you got Tyson Fury, you got Mike Tyson, you've got, you know, this is what I'm drawn to, this sport myself actually, it's just the way they talk, the way they conduct their business. I think Muhammad Ali, the way he talks is amazing. And I think Wilder has, you know, he, he does look to teach when he speaks and some do say that he sort of goes into preacher um, in pro- in, and prophetic type talk and um, pastor type talk and that can be quite annoying but I, I think overall I think he's, he's okay. But the thing is when you're pipped against Tyson Fury and look I am I'm gonna admit I'm a big Tyson Fury fan if you're pipped against Tyson Fury I think you know he told him what time of day it is basically in terms of how they did their trash talk you know, Tyson Fury won all of them, every conference, every face-off, blah, blah, blah. So I think had, in it, had, it, had he not met, met the match of Tyson Fury, I think he had that air of mystery around him because of those ridiculous knockouts, because of his story, his inspiring story coming to sport so late and him relying on, you know, this not being his main sport, you see. So, and yeah, I've put another point here whereby, you know, Making this fight five versus five, it, again, it's like the people I'm, I'm talking to, they're not drawn so much to it. Deontay Wilder carries a lot of weight. So I think I'll be tuning in to, to see that. But from a business standpoint, I feel as though this this sort of setup is a bit of a loss leader. As in like, it, there'll be a little bit of a loss here compared to Tyson Fury versus Usyk. And again, Tyson Fury versus Usyk, Usyk winning, I don't know how good that is for the sport, but there will be a rematch, so that's good for the sport. And also Tyson Fury Usyk, there wasn't a knockout, and when there's big knockouts, that's what people want to see. That's what people tune in to see, and what people comment on, what people react highly to. So there wasn't any of that. So this five v five has the capability of having that. Also, one of the reasons why I think Zhang might win is both fighters have lost against Joseph Parker, Joe Parker. Joseph Parker and I feel as though Zhang did better against Parker than Wilder did against Parker so it's a bit of a weird logic but I think Zhang like very very nearly beat Joseph Parker but you know so that that, it knocked him down knocked him down a few times so that's why I'm kind of leaning more on leaning more on Zhang what else and obviously there's the age-old thing about Wilder that he doesn't have a lot of boxing skills i mean who am i to say that to be honest but as a unfortunately as a you know bystander in comparative to zhang he doesn't in comparative to a lot of boxing he doesn't have a lot of boxing skills he's he's very reliant on on the knockout i mean i think that's fair to say so so therefore zhang if he knows how to sort of avoid you know, the knockout punch, then if he can, he, he'll use his boxing skills and all it is, there's them going to be pipped against their boxing skills. So that's why I think Zhang might win. And that's my prediction regarding that fight. So I'll be tuning in for the 5v5. I'm a big fan, not a big fan. I mean, like, I really like how Frank Warren speaks and conducts himself. I like how Eddie Hearn riles people up and, you know, pushes people's buttons. And, you know, I think he's a fun individual, a fun guy. So, no, interesting personalities. Personalities is what people, you know, is what makes people tune in. And, and uh, I really hope it's loads of knockouts and, you know, a lot of eyeballs on this. And then the next thing that happens on, on the Saturday, a little bit earlier on in the Saturday, will be uh, the Champions League final. So, Champions League final, more my cup of tea, football. I do love boxing, more for the personalities and Tyson Fury and Muhammad Ali but uh, football is you know is is the sport that I watch the most so Real Madrid and it's also in Wembley it's in London 
I'm from the UK, I'm from London, so it's all good. So, <laughs> Real Madrid versus Borussia Dortmund. I mean, my prediction is that, you know, Real Madrid have... I, I, I don't know a Real Madrid. I'm not aware of a Real Madrid that has lost in a final, in a, in a Champions League final. I'm not aware of that. It's beyond. It's before my time. And it's before before a lot of people's time. The last time they lost to the Champions League final was in the 80s. And I just feel as though, you know, Champions League is Real Madrid's and they have so much heritage in it. And the heritage is what's going to help them get over the line. And Real Madrid, they're just like very clinical. They don't, you know, they don't, you know, play finals. They they win finals. They, you know, they they're there to take over. They're not there just to like take part. Yeah, and that's a famous line from Conor McGregor. Some are notable stories around it. The Real Madrid is Tony Cruz retiring, having you know played ten seasons for Real Madrid and collected five Champions Leagues. That's remarkable. Personally, in terms of the res- actual result scoreline, I do want to see a dominant final. I don't want to see some of the. But I, I do. I, I obviously for entertainment, I want to see a comeback. But I also don't mind seeing a dominant final. I really, really don't mind seeing a dominant final. But the Real Madrid of late are the are the gum, comeback guys. So I think Dortmund could potentially be three one up, two one up, and then lose the game four three. And a lot of it happened in, two, in the second half, so no need to watch the first half. The other notable kind of story would be that Bellingham, having left Borussia Dortmund to for Real Madrid, now comes back, and his team is his ex team is in the final, and he's in the final, playing one of the biggest parts. Him and uh, Modric and and uh, Vinicius um, are are the are the talisman, right? So there's that. Do I want Bellingham? in his New Zealand in Zidane role, maybe a bit too soon, but it's there, it's on the cards, he's, he's 20, you know, and he's doing bits. There's there's Bellingham, or do I want Bellingham's ex-team to win? I want Real Madrid to win. If I want a team that hasn't won it for a while or hasn't ever wanted to do it, I want it that to be Arsenal because I'm a, I'm a gooner, and I want us to kind of pave that way for smaller teams to kind of win it. Smaller-ish teams compared to Real Madrid, or or smaller-ish teams in terms of European heritage to win it. So before I disrespect my own club here, so that's what I mean. So I don't want Borussia Dortmund to start that start that um, trajectory. I want Arsenal to to start that trajectory next year and next season. But yeah, so there's that. Also, position for position, you know, it would be a Madrid player over Borussia Dortmund if he was to do a combined eleven. But football is very unpredictable and it's high stakes and it's high pressure and in high stakes, high pressure and emotional emotions flying around, chaos, a lot of things can happen. And um, yeah, Dortmund do have one thing going for Dortmund, I guess, is they have one of their key key men uh, retiring so there's going to be uh, Ruiz I believe or you know he's been in many finals I believe I'm not sure actually I'll have to double check that uh, do, uh, you know correct me in the chat please but you got Dortmund I've got two ex-Man United players which is a bit of a trajectory for them but Man United have just overturned a giant Man City to a certain extent obviously we, domestically in the Premier League we, you know Man City do look normal they don't look normal, but they can be beaten. But you know, to the rest of the world, they look like, you know, they are you know giants. So and Man United, Manchester United was able to overturn them. So and Borussia Dortmund have some players from Man United, ex Man United players. So you know that could be some writing on the wall. You know, I'm kind of like reaching here, <laughs> but there is some writing on the wall there. And obviously, uh, Atalanta tore up the script as well. And if Borussia Dortmund start banging, you know, banging three, they might tear up the script. You know, they, they, they might not be reading the script either. So we don't want... The thing in favour of Real Madrid is that they would have seen... They would have seen Atlanta for sure beat by Leverkusen and, you know, just realise that they can't sleep on their team, their opposition. 
I'm not sure that they, they would know that Man City, Manchester United, Manchester United beat Man City, but you know, ad, upsets can can have ripples around Europe, and uh, I think that might have gone onto their radar. So they'll be locked in even more than they are, I think. And yeah, I, I do see I do see see Madrid winning this, and I hope Madrid win this in a dominant fashion. But it would be very entertaining if there was a comeback with Dortmund scoring first. But yeah, watch this space. So that's my prediction. So in summary, in summary, I would say that 5v5 boxing, I see the Chinese boxer winning. Zhang beating Wilder via outboxing. outboxing. It'll probably go to a decision. I'm hoping for the sake of us watching that there are some brutal knockouts, I'm hoping, because that's that always brings eyeballs. And in terms of the Real Madrid versus Borussia Dortmund, I think Dortmund, I, I hope Real Madrid win in a dominant fashion, but I think Borussia Dortmund might score first and, and then Real Madrid come back and win. And uh, so I think Real Madrid take that. That's my prediction. Please do comment. I want to know your thoughts, really. I've, I'm just introducing topics here and my thoughts, but really and truly, like, I don't know. And I would really love to hear your thoughts. What haven't, you know, there's so many angles I probably haven't considered. You know, I really want to continue this discussion in the comment section and, uh, and see if we can get this predicted absolutely to a T before the, before the result comes out on the Saturday so I would encourage that thanks very much and I you know this is a prediction video I do have a podcast and most of my channel is about men's styling and 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 fashion so if any of those things interest you I would strongly uh, recommend that you subscribe and so that you know the algorithm is aware of you and so my videos become more available to you and um, again I've already said it please do I do encourage comments as well Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.